Okay, so today we are working on the stairs. This is with the uh, Life Proof Luxury Vinyl Planks. My goal is to use the exact same planks that we did with the floor for the stairs. And I've worked out a little plan, even though they don't sell bull noses for this. I think I got a way of working a bull nose from the actual planks. You can see I've got the first plank on there all the way up the stairs. So I've done that. And as it works out, each of these blanks is about, I think, planks is seven, seven and a half inches in width. So I can get exactly two. And the second one will actually wrap around and be the actual bull nose for the stairs. Now, the process I'm going to be using is to take an existing board, as you can see right here, and heat it and actually bend it into position. So as you can see, this actually worked out pretty well. I'm going to show you with my sample. I can slap that in there. And obviously this was just a test, so I don't have it exactly measured, but tap it a little bit more and it'll fit in there and snap in just like a regular plank will. And then you'll see the end looks like an actual bull nose. Now this was my first little test of the theory, so what I know I have to do is I have to hollow out the inside just a little bit more where the curve is so that it's easier to bend when I heat it up. And that's what I'm doing right now outside. Okay, so the first step in getting our bull nose created is to go ahead and take the piece that you cut that's going to become the bull nose, get it into position. And then I kind of, it doesn't have to be exact, but as you can see, this is where it's going to eventually end up. And of course, we'll tap that in tighter later. But the idea now is just figure out where the end of this bull nose is down here. So I take a felt tip, Sharpie, and just run it up underneath there, the edge, all the way across because in my case the stairs aren't exactly even going this way so I have to make sure that I use the measurement of the actual stairs and not try to do a straight line per se. Pull that out and now what I got have is where the actual bull nose is going to be. So what I need to do is cut out about a two inch strip. Just remove the material or a little much as I can without getting of course all the way through from here to the top and uh, I'm going to use a router a small hand router for that you might have something better but uh, that's all I've got so anyway that's what we're going to do next okay so I'm out here with my little makeshift table and what I've done now this was the original line that I marked from the stair and I wanted to go a half inch each on this route and about a half, uh, one and a half inches that way because of the way it bends around, I need a good amount to be able to bend it without much resistance. So I've marked my lines across here. Not, doesn't have to be exact, but just about what I need here. And now I'm gonna use my little handy router, which by the way, is a little black and matrix Black & Decker Matrix. Great tool. Comes in handy. Nice little router with it. I only have it set... Well, I'm using a 3 quarters wide uh, bit in this. Obviously, so I don't have to do a bunch of little cuts. 
and I'm just going to kind of cut it down along here and it's set to about an eighth of an inch. The boards are about I think a quarter of an inch thick so if I take an eight inch that leaves me about an eight inch material left on there. That should be plenty bend bendable once I heat it up. So hopefully in the end my theory of how this should work <laughs> will turn out. Alright so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the routing. All right, so basically I have it, a little guiding board right here that I've set up to give me somewhat of a straight line. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm trying to be neat about it. So here we go. Okay, so let's brush this off here. Not bad. As you can see, we've got a nice clean cut in there. About an eighth of an inch has been taken out. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust it so I can do the next little row, it takes me about three cuts with a three quarters inch, and uh, that'll be good. Pause that. Okay, so now we've adjusted it for the second cut, and we're going to go ahead and finish that up. Alright, so I flipped the plank around so that I can get a smoother cut on this since the router tends to rip it more on one side. So I wanted a nice clean cut, mainly for looks, even though no one's going to see this, but now we do the final cut. Okay. Okay, so we now have our final board cut here. And as you can see, we have just a small bit left on the end there. Just enough to give it some sturdiness, some rigidness whatever you want to call that but I think this will give us enough leeway so that when I heat it up it's not going to be too stiff so that I can't bend it easily okay so we are in the process of adding our stair bull noses there's our first one, second, the third one. We had a bit of a problem, which I will explain later. We're at four, five, six, and now we're on the seventh one. Just to kind of give you an idea, what we've done is you can see there's a lip that I pl put the plank in, make sure it's nice and connected like this and it's sticking straight out over the actual bull nose of the stairway staircase 
So I put glue down for now. And as you can see, okay, this is the actual bull nose underneath that I'm wrapping it around. Okay. There you go. You can see the cutout underneath that we talked about earlier. So now I've set some glue in here and a little on the edges here and I'm kind of setting it down to let it dry just a little so that it's stiff or at least it's on there nice and tight so that when we start heating it up then it won't kind of move as much from up this direction. So hopefully that will take care of that. Okay, so the next step is just take my handy little ruler just to kind of get a, an idea where the edge of the bull nose is that I'm going to actually be bending. And it's been pretty consistent. It's a little under three inches from the edge of my seven inch ruler here. I'm going to make a mark up top here at the three inches. And this doesn't have to be exact, it's just to give you an idea of where you're going to have to start heating to get it nice and bendy right at the spot where you need it. Okay. Alright, so get that a little bit more accurate. Now this is best done with two people so that one can be heating and as it gets hot we start doing the bending. Now, since there's only two of us, it's a little harder to show. But I will try to set something up at some point so you can kind of see how I'm doing this. Basically, we're heating it up. Oops. And as it gets hot, I'm taking this 2x4 and I take it on the edge and I just kind of just kind of bend it around it. I'm using this because it makes it nice and straight. Otherwise, if you use your hand, you get this. If it gets real bendy and melty, this part gets kind of uneven. You'll see it's kind of crooked as you're going through here. So this helps make it nice and smooth and even. And then you'll end up with, like you see right down here, how it kind of goes around the end. And there you can see my, my marks from before right near the edge of where it needed to be heated. So you start off heating it right around there and as you make your bend slowly start working your way down and then heat it up down here so that you can kind of bend it underneath. And eventually what happens is I've got some temporary risers or whatever you call those that go in the back here so that when this is nice and soft I push these in and clamp it, kind of almost clamps it so that once it cools, it'll cool into that shape there. And uh, so that's where we're at right now. We're doing the seventh step. This has been a learning process because I've not seen this done before on the internet or YouTube. So I've had to come up with my own little technique for this. And basically, we're just using this little hot gun. And I would say it takes about maybe 10, 15 minutes at most per stair. You know, once I get it to this point here where I can start uh, heating it up. The thing is, you got to go slow. And you have to be really careful that you're making sure you feel it. Make sure it's nice and hot. 
And if it feels too hot to your touch, it's perfect because that's, that's what you need. You need that material to be nice and soft. And then you can start to bend it. Otherwise, you end up cracking it. Okay, I mentioned earlier that stair number three was a problem. And actually, it was not the technique, it was me getting too impatient and trying to force it. Of course, it was only the third one, so what happened is when I put it in here, originally I had it all nicely lined up in here and it worked. And then when I pulled it out, because um, I thought for some reason I needed to pull it out, put the glue on this end, and then put it back in. Not sure why am I thinking. I think because my first step I actually had to pull it off and bend it a little bit more. Um, but what happened is, those of you that are working with Life Proof, you know that it has these grooves right here. And when I put it on, a piece of debris had gotten in on this side right here. So when I was pushing it in, and I don't know, maybe I can get it in to kind of give you an idea of what happened. At any rate, it was lining up nice and smooth up on this side. And I'm not going to put it all the way in, just you get an idea. It wasn't lining up here. And throughout my entire flooring process, I've been thinking, you know, always making sure that this is nice and clean and there's no debris in there. For this, for some reason, this time I didn't check it. And there was a little chunk in there, so I got to where I was hammering. I was banging it in here, trying to get it lined up because I thought for sure it was just something that needed to be bumped in there a little bit more. And I ended up banging it too hard. And there you see what happens because as it got soft, you know, for the bendy process, it also got a little brittle there. And my impatience cost me a, a board and a stair. And at that time, probably about 20 minutes of work because I still wasn't quite sure what I was doing. So I'm going to come back and have to recut this. Re remove the stuff inside there again you know get that little router on there and then uh, now that I got my technique a little bit better down pack and also not trying to force stuff make sure that the grooves are clean and this goes for if you're doing flooring anyway always make sure that you've got these grooves clear of debris because that'll really throw you off even just a little piece like something like that going in there will, will cause it not to completely line up correctly. And then you're going to be frustrated like I was and just don't make the same mistake. Okay, so as, as we can see here, we're heating it up. kind of slowly going back and forth along the marks that I had. This is where the edge of the underneath bull nose is, the actual subfloor I guess you would call it, or substair in this case, and so it's just kind of getting hot. And as soon as it gets kind of bendy, which we can test, it still feels a little stiff right now. But you'll notice that as you start softening it, it's going to get a little bendier each time. And you'll get a good feel for it. So hopefully... You'll take your time and not be like me and rush one of them, which ended up cracking. But right now, we've got the technique pretty much down. And then, uh, 
I'll show you how to do the actual bending itself. Okay, so now we're going to use that 2x4 and I use this to kind of roll it over. You can kind of see it's nice and bendy right now. Ideally, you want to keep the heat going on it to keep it warm. But someone had to do the video, so at any rate, you want to go ahead and just kind of slowly keep bending it. And I use the 2x4 so that it stays nice and smooth, otherwise if your hands, you get these little dents in them. Which, so I'm just kind of slowly forming it down. It's still nice and warm. But, again, you want to keep it going. So I'm going to continue this and we're going to keep heating and we'll get back to you once we get to the part where it goes underneath. Signing out. Uh, we've got this nice and soft. We're going to move it underneath. This is my temporary riser. And then I just kind of stick it underneath there. While it's still nice and warm and moldable, whatever you want to call that. So this is to kind of get it to the shape so that when it cools, it's in that shape. So I'm just pushing this underneath there. it in there already but I'm gonna go ahead obviously later and I'm gonna put some extra screws underneath each of these bull noses and then the risers will go in and hold everything in nice and tight from there so I think this one's ready to go it's nice still a little bit warm so I can feel that it's gonna cool in place and then it'll be shaped to the bull nose and we've got ourselves another stair done. Okay, so now that uh, the actual stair has been molded at the top, you know, the little nose, bull nose there, I'm softening up the bottom so that when we put the risers in, It'll fold up nice and neat underneath. And be held in place and then it'll also kind of cool at that position. So the risers, I'm just using of course straight wood painted. Here's the previous step. You can see. With glue on the back, sliding it up underneath. It's very tight, so once you pound, pound it in there, it'll go ahead and get nice and tight and keep everything in there. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of uh, what we got to do. Okay, now we're in the process of putting this final piece in. As you can see, it's a very tight fit, which is what I want. Obviously, I'm having trouble getting this one in. Might be a little bit too tight, of course, now that we decide to video this. There we go. I'm starting at the top. still a little bit warm. I'm going to pound that in there. Whack 
like that. It's hitting the wall or the back, whatever you call that. And it's pretty solid. So now you can see, got a nice tight fit in there. It's holding this up. And the only other thing I'm going to do is wipe a little of the glue off the bottom because as you push it in, obviously it kind of scrapes across the bottom of this. And then we're done. Okay, so now that the floors are done, my bull noses are done, my risers are in. I think overall, despite the fact that I'm not a professional, they turned out pretty darn good. And I can always say I did this. And those of you that are professionals or maybe even if you're just doing this once, if you got the luxury vinyl planks, this might give you an idea of how you can get a bull nose for your staircase. Maybe the professionals can figure out some kind of a routine way that's a lot easier and more professionally done to get these to work, but uh, I'm a DIYer and this is uh, my work and I think it turned out pretty damn good.